Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello from San Juan, Puerto Rico. How's everyone doing? Okay. We're so excited. We're so excited to see who's tuning in from. Amazing. So Gustavo's going to start off. He's going to start off with the cocktail. You ready, Gustavo? Of course. Let's do it. Uh, I actually um, decided to start a little bit earlier because, you know, to take off the edge. Uh, since we're doing a boozy brunch, there's no judgment here. So I figured, why not? So today we're going to be doing something pretty cool. Um, it's actually a take. We're blending two um, cultures. So it's it's we got inspired from a Colombian recipe. We've traveled to Colombia many times, the mm -hmm. country we love. Uh, and there's a lot of similarities between the Caribbean, Colombia, and Puerto Rico. And we decided to do a frozen boozy coconut lemonade. Uh, it's actually very simple. It's got only four ingredients, um, three ingredients, really. The fourth one is just reutilizing the limes. Uh, and in your case, what we're doing is we know that everyone is in quarantine, or most people are, or they're supposed to be, uh, staying inside, trying to, to flatten the curve mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we you know, uh, stay safe and keep others safe. So what we're doing is trying to use as simple ingredients as possible. Um, today, All right. what we're doing. All right, ready? I'm gonna put the camera on Gustavo now so he can show you. So here we have the mise en place. It's always easier to just set everything up ahead of time so you're not in the midst of it, just trying to, you know, grab your bearings. Oh, I forgot to mix this. Oh, that's cooking up and it's burning. So it's a little, a little bit easier. When you're live, there's always a possibility of burning something, making a mistake, but that's what makes it a little bit more exciting. So today we're going to be doing the boozy frozen coconut lemonade. And like I said, really simple. We'll be using light donku rum, donku cristal. I love this rum. It's got a great profile. It's not too sweet. It, you know, it really packs a punch, but it's in a way that it's very refined at the same time. We have our lime juice, half a cup of lime juice already squeezed. I kept the limes just so that we can use the rind a little bit with this microplane, which gets it really fine and add a little bit of that oomph of the zest. The rum, of course, I already have a pre-portioned half a cup of rum and then coconut cream. Depending on how healthy you want to go, you don't necessarily need to do coconut cream. You could do coconut milk, you could do coconut water, but really what gives, you know, this, this, the silkiness of the juice, the, uh, the cocktail that we're going to make is the cream. If you use coconut milk, make sure to use the bottom of the can, which is a little bit more solid, which is creamier as well. And you want to use full, full coconut fat, none of that light stuff. We're going <laughs> to go into this. Let's go all in, right? This is not necessarily the healthiest recipe. Like I said, if you want to make it a little bit healthier, coconut water or coconut milk. All right. So we're going to start actually with the most viscous one, which is the coconut cream. It doesn't look that beautiful, but it'll blend really nicely in a moment. You want to make sure you get all of that in there. No waste. And during this, uh, during these times, we're trying to be very conscious of minimizing waste recycling as much as possible. We're starting our own compost. We started it three weeks ago and it's going pretty well. So try to be more conscious about the amount of waste that we're producing and reducing that. Here we have the lime, all of that in there. I don't mind pulp. If you guys don't really like the pulp, you can go ahead and strain it. We like, you know, if it's fresh, we don't mind the pulp. I'm getting the ice just so that I have it. Okay, Ready? someone's asking how much a crema de coco, how much coconut cream are we putting and how many people is this recipe for? Okay, so I'm making it right now since it's only two of us quarantining here. I'm making it for just two. Because it's a frozen drink, I don't have a lot of space in the freezer, so I'm not gonna, I don't want to have a lot of leftover. So I'm making it for two, and it's half a cup of uh, lime juice, a full cup of a coconut cream, half a cup of rum, and again, with the rum, I leave it to your discretion. You're not going to ruin it. I mean, if you go way overboard and you start putting a cup and a half, it might be too much, but half a cup, you'll still feel the rum, but it'll still be pretty well balanced. Will lemon juice work instead of lime if people have yeah, lemon juice? Definitely. And the thing here in Puerto Rico, we have this conundrum where we call, we, we sort of switch it up. Our native 
uh, limes are actually lemons, but it's it's not that confusing, but people get confused all the time. But yeah, you can go ahead and use either mm -hmm. one. Okay, we're going with two and a half cups of ice. Got a little curl down there. Yeah. I washed my hands a moment ago, so. So we have half a cup of lime juice, one cup of coconut cream, and half a cup of light rum. Hello from, uh, welcome. Someone's tuning in from Ohio. I love that we have people from all over the states tuning in. That's great. And of course, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican rum. Absolutely. But at this point, really, it's it's what you have in your, in your fridge, right? And your pantry. And your pantry. Beautiful. And I think during this time, we've been using a lot of coconut, a lot of coconut milk. We made, the other day, we had a, a French chef of ours, actually two French chefs that used coconut milk in their dishes. Chef Maria Mercedes grew up from Gallo Negro. And she, we did, um, they were Mallorca, which is sort of a local brioche-like bread, uh, French toast with a coquito batter, amazing. And that had coconut milk. And then we did with Raul Correa, we did an arroz con pollo, another very typical recipe. And we also added coconut milk and it just gave it a creaminess, slight, you know, slight sweetness. It was really nice. Okay, so we're ready to blend. Okay, does it matter if you do white or brown rum? We're using light rum. What would the difference be if you use a dark rum? If you use dark rum, I mean, obviously, dark rums will have wood. They'll have different notes, vanilla, coffee, chocolate, some of them. So you're going to accentuate those notes. So it's gonna, it's not going to compete with the coconut, but it is going to have a different taste profile. So it's up to your taste. If you want to do, you can definitely do dark rum. It's just going to be a little bit, the rum's going to shine even more. So if you want to taste that rum even more, and you want those vanilla, mm -hmm. toffee, uh, chocolate, tobacco sometimes in, in, in dark rum, go ahead. No problem. Okay. Hello, everyone from the Bronx, from Argentina, from New Jersey. I'm racing the music just because this is about to get noisy. Woo! <laughs> Looking good. And I'm gonna do this over the sink. It's a little dirty, the sink. I'm still cleaning some dishes. But this way, if I spill any, it's not gonna be on the floor. And you see how it gets really smooth, really nice. You can do this with crushed ice. I just love the way that it tastes with this. So we're just gonna come right here. Again, less waste, metal straw. Um, someone wants to know what you're drinking. So I am actually, and this is for you, because you can hold the camera and hold the drink. Oh, yes. And I'm getting myself one. I'll tell you what I'm drinking in just a second. Mm, someone's dad is stuck in Puerto Rico and can't return to New York. Um, yeah. Amazing. What a great place to be. The weather's amazing. It's great. It's hot. So it's, and it's tropical. Mm. So I, this one, mm. I was drinking and shout out to Rums of Puerto Rico. Umbrella carries. And they're tuning in. So that's awesome. Uh, Bacardi, Barrilito, and all the different rums that we produce here in Puerto Rico. But this is actually a blend that I made. And it's a homemade blend with a couple of different rums. It has so I have little bits of bottle. I'm doing my own in-bottle blending. Why? Because I have, I had little bits of rums in different bottles and I couldn't share with anyone. So I said, you know what? Why not age, keep aging my own blend? So it has Donku Vermouth Double Cask. It has Four Square. Forget which Four Square it has. And I believe a cruise and that your dad gave me probably that. Nice. Okay, so it's a funky little blend. Why not? All right, so how is that? How's that cocktail? It's amazing. It's creamy, but I love the tartness of the lime in it. So I think it's really well balanced. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like you said, it's really easy to make. It's ingredients that you can uh, typically, you know, get at the supermarket. Like the, oh, perfect. So frozen boozy coconut lemonade. 
half a cup of lime juice, one cup co cream of coconut, half a cup of light rum, and two and a half cups of ice. Feel awesome. free to experiment. Really, the cool thing about cooking and making cocktails is that you can make it your own. If you like, let's say, if you really like that tangy, you know, puckery lime, do a little bit more zest or do a little bit more lime juice. You really can't mess it up as long as you don't put, you know, you don't add sugar. Coconut cream has more sugar than coconut milk. So when you make it with coconut milk, uh, you're gonna have to add a little bit of sugar, brown sugar, whatever is the healthiest, but you can go with white sugar as well. But just to balance it out, you might. With the coconut cream, it's already sweetened, so we didn't add any sugar at all. Super, well guys, I'm glad that you enjoyed the cocktail. Make it at home. Cheers. Really easy. Salud. Woo. Salud. Woo, salud. And coconuts, actually, I would love to have more time to tell you more of it, but it's one of those ingredients. Why are we doing this? Because coconuts are found in Puerto Rico, and you know it comes from our African heritage, uh, from West Africa, Congo, they brought coconuts here and it's been a part of our desserts and our, our main dishes. During our tours at Spoon, we really feature coconut in a lot of different, mostly desserts, but also dishes. Uh, and it's just it's such a versatile ingredient. You can use every part of it, even the husk to burn, make fire and actually um, repel mosquitoes, little fact. Uh, so I think now we're pretty much ready to get Paulina on our guava bacon panatela. Uh, a dessert that my mom's been making since I was a, a little boy, but we gave it a little twist with the bacon and something else that you'll learn along the way to make it even more delicious. Mom, don't don't be mad. I swear that it's delicious. I did not butcher your recipe. We only enhanced it. So if you're tuning Ooh, in. Gustavo, I think someone, someone likes, your, likes your eyes. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm up next. I'm really excited for this. Woo, hold on, everyone. And Spoon. Um, Spoon is a culinary experience company. Um, our Instagram is at the Spoon Experience. So follow, follow us. And when this is all over and you can travel again, we would love to host you on one of our tours, cooking classes, cocktail classes. All right. What the Rico tour does? How are you, Frankie? Hi, Frankie. That's a colleague of ours. Amazing uh, tours. Look him up as we well. We collab a lot together. So that's awesome. All right. Ready for the panetera? Let's do it. We will well, share the I recipes. Said. We will share the recipes on our page as soon as this is over. I see Patricia from Discover Puerto Rico also mentioning that, so don't worry. Um, somebody's asking why English? Because most of Discover Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico's DMO. We are trying to broadcast to everyone outside of Puerto Rico. We work together with the tourism company and with the DMO. So the idea right now is we're trying to get you to experience Puerto Rico while you're not here. Those of you who are here, you'll get the ingredients even easier, but never mind. Enjoy. So here goes, Paulina. Oh, you're still drinking. <laughs> All right. So yes, we do have to thank Sonaida. And I know she's tuning in, Gustavo's mom, for this amazing recipe, but we did give it a little bit of a twist. So um, many of the recipes will ask you to do room temperature, like cold butter. We've actually, um, we've melted the butter. So we're going to be, that will allow us to stir it less and it's going to give us less of a cakey, more of a gooey consistency in the panetera, which is what we really like. Personally. Senor Sanchez, si, sí, estamos en Puerto Rico. Yes, we are here. Okay, so we have the butter and sugar. So here we have one stick of butter and one cup of sugar. Okay, we're going to mix that. And here we have the rest of the mise en place. Like I said earlier, it's a lot easier if you already have everything set up and you don't have to be worrying about, wait, how many ounces, how many cups of this? Obviously, you can also get the eggs ready. We decided not to, so you can crack them in the moment. And I'll, we'll go through all of the different, what everything is. But it's a very simple recipe. What we're adding is really just tweaking the traditional recipe with two or three different ingredients. But it's a super simple recipe that you could do at home. So Paulina already melted the butter a little bit before. Now she mixed the butter with the sugar mm -hmm. and now is all the wet ingredients. And why the wet ingredients? Because it works a lot better than if you start putting in the dry ones, they clump up. Well, first I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the eggs and then I'm going to continue with the, wet with, the, with the, some of the dry. Um, so this is just in order, to, I mean, it allows it to incorporate better. So here we have the sugar, the butter, the two eggs, and we don't need to mix it a lot. 
Um, it's just kind of to, to incorporate. Like I said earlier, we want the consistency at the end to be nice and gooey, not like cakey and dry. So that's people are asking what the recipe is. We are making a bacon guava panetela. Like I said, panetela is this very traditional Puerto Rican recipe. You could, it's a simple recipe. A lot of times people will take them to parties. Uh, I grew up eating it at home, and my aunt's house was also a great cook. And, uh, yeah, well, what we're doing is just twisting it up. Okay, so now I am adding two tablespoons of coconut, of a rum. First, I did rum. So oh, yeah. We decided this... we wanted to add rum to it because why not? And we added aged rum. So we added two tablespoons of rum añejo, don cu añejo this rum. Guy, it's an old label, but it tastes just the same. Don cu just rebranded. So when you see there, they actually went back to their something similar to their original branding that I love. Uh, but the recipe is still the same. So we did two tablespoons of rum. You can tweak that. You can't add too much more because then the batter will be a little bit too uh, liquid, you want yep. it to still remain the consistency. But we do want it to be really moist, so we're also adding, so I know we added butter, but we're also now adding coconut oil. So we're adding two tablespoons of coconut oil into the mixture. We're going to mix it a little bit. We're going to add then one teaspoon of vanilla. Now we have, you know, make sure your vanilla is good quality. Spend the extra money. This is Madagascar uh, vanilla extract, and it makes a really big difference. If not, you're going to get that, like, artificial flavor um, and, and taste. So we, don't, we definitely don't, don't want that. I love that. that somebody said, we always should add bacon because bacon. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And somebody asked, hmm, mm -hmm. what was that? Nosotros la comíamos crudos. We used to eat it raw. I think we used to call it funche. So funche mm -hmm. is actually a recipe made with corn. Uh, it's delicious. We have a friend, uh, Juan Nieves, Chef Juan Nieves, uh, restaurant Funche actually. His restaurant's called Funche, and he does the most delicious uh, fresh bacalao, fresh cod. Uh, over a funche that is just a, actually it's a coconut funche that he does that is delicious now we're adding two teaspoons of baking powder we used all-purpose flour for this we didn't use like a cake uh or self-rising flour so we need to add some baking powder How's that to looking? that oh it's looking amazing now i actually um got rid of the whisk i'm going to use a spoon now to incorporate my dry ingredients uh so that it's not like all sticky on the a, on, on the on the whisk and it's easier going to be a lot a lot easier okay so we have someone that actually made finished making the cocktails awesome oh that's great how did it turn out oh let me take a sip excuse me mm. And somebody asked, where's the restaurant? I, oh, Priorities. Uh, Funche is, they moved. They used they're to be. They're in Caguas. Yeah, they're in Caguas. They used to be in the Botanical Garden. Now they mm -hmm. have their own locale. Hopefully opening soon after this uh, pandemic is all over. Um, but they will be. They will be. He's a great chef. Adding one teaspoon of salt. We always want to add salt to our recipes. Yep. It's just a bit, you know, the recipe, original recipe calls for a pinch since we, we were testing out half a recipe with a teaspoon. So this one has about two teaspoons. And uh, somebody is asking, can you make the recipe without bacon? Definitely, the, the original recipe is without yes. bacon. Yes. So you can make it vegetarian without the bacon. Uh, here we have the two cups of flour. All purpose flour, so I'm gonna add that. And this is our last step into the batter. So we are going to mix that. And the reason Paulina switched from the uh, from using the whisk to using the spoon is because after a while when you're starting to mix everything if you use the whisk all of those ingredients will stick inside the whisk whereas a spoon once the the first ingredients were already incorporated they mix a lot better with the spoon now Just this is going to be a very gooey a very sticky sort of dough um, so don't be don't think you're doing anything wrong you're not doing anything wrong if it's going to be sticky and you're going to have to we'll show you you're going to have to work this with your hands. All right, this is pretty much all incorporated. And notice I didn't use a mixer. You don't have to do the, the mixer. Like, again, we found that by doing it by hand, uh, the dough comes out a little bit more gooey, which is Somebody asked about baking powder. Uh, it is two teaspoons of baking powder. Mm -hmm. you if you're using all-purpose flour, if you're using 
self-rising self that you would you, eliminate yeah, that ingredient. You do not need baking powder if you're using self-rising. Okay. Yes, you can use the mixer. Somebody's asking about using a mixer, yeah. but you have to be more careful not to, to overbeat, over, it. overbeat the mixture because then it, it's going to be a little tougher and the, the cake, because this is so of a cake batter is going to be uh, not as fluffy and as gooey as we're trying to get it. I mean, different people will do different recipes. We are fans of doing recipes that are a little bit more uh, gooey and, and softer. Now, Paulina's just um, buttering up the pan with some butter spray, only because it's a little easier to, little easier and, and to do than with actual Although butter. Although real butter is always, you know, typically, typically better. Yeah. Uh, all right, so now I'm gonna kind of, you know, I'm kind of gonna do it by by eye. Um, I'm gonna take half of the of the mixture. Ooh, how fun! It's like play-doh. Ooh, nice. And we're gonna spread it. And this is kind of fun. It's really awesome to do with kids because. Who's not going to like this? Dorian, round? you're asking if the video will be available later. Yes, yes it'll be on will. Discover Puerto Rico's Instagram safe, so you can rewatch it or your friends can rewatch it later. Somebody liked your earrings. Awesome. Those were actually a gift Thank from you. her mother in law, my oh, mother. Yes, our mother. And, and somebody's asking if our location is primarily a daytime venue. Well, actually, No, we run tours, Spoon runs tours all day. We have stuff in the morning, our old San Juan walk and taste. We have stuff that goes out of San Juan into Loiza and Piñones in the afternoon, our drive around. We have stuff at night, our sip and savor cocktail tour. We do a lot of custom uh, experiences that include cooking classes, cocktail classes, um, corporate activities, team building. So in the last uh, nine years, we've sort of developed different experiences for different niche markets. Yeah. We do all day, never stop working. <laughs> I know, we can't wait to you know, get back into the street and create awesome experiences for, for everyone. But for now, we're here. I just noticed that I had a little bit of in Fajardo. Actually, someone's asking if we do in Fajardo. We have done experiences in Fajardo. But uh, we do a lot of custom stuff. We collaborate a lot with uh, East Island Excursions out of Puerto Rey Marina. I'm serving a little bit of cocktail that we had left over there. And I'm going to take some too. All right. So I'm just going to wash my hands quickly. So, so, I did the so right now she did here. the... Bottom. It does not need to be perfect. As remember, this is going to go into the oven and it's going to melt a little more of the batter and it's going to sit better in the pan. So even if it looks, let's say, rustic, it's going to look a lot better when it comes out of the oven. Trust me. So what and, I'm doing and now I'm putting a little bit I more am. in mine. Let's see if I don't spill it. Voy por ahí, Paulina. Here. Since she's not paying attention, I'm having this one. What are you doing? So, this is so good. Um, and I know, you know, we drink a lot of piña coladas in Puerto Rico, but this is just like another version of a really delicious creamy, creamy beverage. And I think... But because of the lime, it doesn't feel as heavy. Exactly. The lime cuts the fat. So... Okay. So next step. So I took a pan, have it on medium to high heat, and I added a little bit of water. There might be about three tablespoons of water in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... You can Yeah, you can eyeball it. We're going to dilute the guava so what we're using the traditional recipe panetella has guava paste and um, so what we did is we took about 18 ounces of guava Just paste water right now for the large pan we've cut it up what we're doing is we're heating it up so that it could be more spreadable it could spread it a little bit easier on the bottom part of the dough and then we're going to incorporate the bacon some people will Just kind of cut it up in slices. Well, 
we'll cut it up in slices and uh, it takes a little bit put it right on top of the we cut it up in pieces so that it uh, melts a little bit faster and the reason for adding the water that was a trick that my mom actually who's a phenomenal cook um, taught me is so that you can actually get it a little bit silkier and it, when you when the dessert comes out of the oven and you're cutting it up it melts and it's not as thick somebody's asking how have I never tried this in my entire life you should make this it's really I mean if you can't find I mean guava has this fantastic uh, property where it doesn't really need lime or any acid because it already has a great balance of sweet and tangy uh, but if you can't find this at home feel free to use um, Tamarind. Tamarind. Feel free to use raspberries if you're in the Northeast and you have access to that in the summer, or strawberries. Guava is just obviously very local. It's a, it's a fruit that's found throughout uh, subtropical mm -hmm. America, Central America, South America. It's rumored to have started. Uh, it's native to Brazil, but it's been in Puerto Rico. There, there have been botanical archaeologi uh, archaeologists that have found guava seeds in mortar and pestles dating back to a thousand years uh, prior to Tainos, so our Puerto Rico's native Indians. So it's really something that's been in our culture for millennia and, and we apply to sauces with pork, uh, to uh, numerous desserts, cocktails. It's really, really versatile. And so right, I think we can, what do you think? I think we can add the, add the bacon. As yeah. you can see, it's more, I mean, there's still chunks and it's okay because it's gonna go in the oven. So this is all going to melt. To melt. Uh, all right, so I think we Queen wanna... Yummy, I like your name. We're going to be posting the recipe on our page and uh, sharing it also through the Discover Puerto Rico Instagram stories. So it'll be up as soon as we're done. We'll upload it. And then while Paulina's mixing, with one hand she's going to mix, and with the other, she's going to catch me getting the bacon into bits. This morning, I was up early cooking up a ton of bacon. Why not? Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, someone, yeah, somebody commented about our, uh, it's called, what we call it a chuleta, but it's a piece of, a piece of wood uh, that can be used as a serving cutting tray board. or a cutting board. And we have to thank our dear friend, um, Chef Ventura Vivoni, who made this for us. Uh, so thank you so much, Chef Vivoni. All right. And he also lets us a whisk because we broke our whisk. Oh, yeah, yeah, th yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> So the baking, okay, so we already, in order to speed up the process, we, uh, Gustavo made a ton of bacon this morning. So wait, someone's asking me the brand of the blender. Um, we're using a Ninja. This is not a paid advertisement. Yeah. Ninja did not pay to be in this video. All right. Oh, that's awesome. The bacon is crispy. Um, and for this large pan, how many a... Uh, are you using how many strips of bacon so we're using a lot of bacon <laughs> so when we were doing recipe testing because you know we made up this recipe uh traditional guava panetela just as guava and we're adding actually and paulina's gonna be putting a pinch of it in a moment we're adding two different things to the actual guava uh, marmalade that we're making and it's the bacon and a little bit of cinnamon so we are using kind of a it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio of guava to bacon because mm -hmm. we noticed when we were doing a two-to-one ratio, uh, the bacon was lost a little bit because guava is very intense. It has very intense flavors. Mm -hmm. So we're actually doing sort of a, we're doing a, you can show the guava how it's looking so nice. Yeah. So I'm, I still have the fire, the fire on. We're doing about um, 15 strips, 16 strips of. Uh, yeah. We're using a lot of, a lot of bacon and it's going it, to, we really love that sweet and savory smoky, hickory. smoke exactly smoky hickory flavor um that you're gonna get from this panetela i mean here in puerto rico we love sweet um sweet and savory guava can you use guava jelly um yes you can use guava jelly absolutely the paste, absolutely the paste the, has a different consistency it's yeah. be better for this particular dessert but you can and you can always stick in it remember you can always use things like starch cornstarch uh, agar to thicken or then water if it's too thick water to make it a little liquefy it a little bit 
Yeah, everything is better with bacon. Una libra, see, you can use the yep. pounds. Basically, a That's pound of bacon is, is about right. We found that if we used too little bacon, it just wasn't enough, and you weren't, you were, you know, the the guava was kind of um, over overpowering it. So I think I'm ready to take this, actually turn off the heat. So I'm going to turn off the heat, and I'm going to add, before the bacon goes in, um, this was Gustavo's twist, to add a little bit of cinnamon to the guava. It's nice. Just a hint. It's and it's just a it's just a hint. Actually, we measured out um, one tablespoon, one teaspoon, but I didn't put all of it, so I'm not putting all of that. And this is really to taste. It's what kind of like you do with salt. It's you know just like a pinch or al gusto, whatever is your preference. Yes, we are going to be posting the recipe later. See, so you see, it's like it, it's a lot thicker than a jelly, um, but it has become more of a jelly consistency. And like I said, it's just going to be easier to spread and easier and cooler to incorporate the bacon. Let's see what's going on with the bacon. All right. Super neat. So the reason why I'm cutting it small is so that instead of you getting a huge chunk of bacon, you can distribute it throughout the pan. I mean, the pan is, uh, what, 11 inches? So this is going to be all mixed in with the guava. And you're not going to get these huge chunk of bacons, but actually get bites that are well mixed in with it, with the guava. And it'll just be, believe me, it seems like a lot, but when it goes in, it actually ends up being super balanced. Absolutely, leave out the cinnamon. Uh, absolutely, you do not need to, to add the, the cinnamon for sure. If you don't like cinnamon, don't don't add it. But like you see, there's a lot of bacon in here. There's a good amount, uh, but we find it to be the perfect amount of bacon. Look, look what happens when you're starting to blend it. You're just folding it in, and all of a sudden. Like when it's going to be in the cake, it's going to be very evenly distributed and it's not going to feel like too much. Like I said, guava is very strong. The taste of guava uh, can mask a lot of flavors. Bacon is also very strong, but we did a two to one ratio before, two to two parts guava, one part bacon, and we realized, nah, it needs more bacon. So that's what we did. Okay. So this is actually ready. Oh, how many calories? Many calories. <laughs> We are, we are not doing, uh, mm. unfortunately, any calorie counting here. We can later uh, estimate it, but at this point, we've been uh, quarantining. They say that TV adds 10 pounds. I'm thinking the quarantine adds about 20, and this is part of why. Okay. What are we making? Those of you that are tuning in, panetela de guayaba y bacon. So bacon, guava, panetela. Exactly. Yeah, and you could just... If you want... You continue with this guy. I'm going to put it down here. Yep. And I'm going to grab the camera. Super. So you just kind of lightly just make this layer. And you know what? I'm going to dump all of it in there. Okay. So I was asking about sugar. Um, okay. The cake itself already has a lot of sugar. Has Guava one. is sweet. Um, you do not need to add additional sugar to the guava bacon. We just added a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, yes. Cinnamon is also sweet, but we just added a pinch to give it a little spice uh, flavor. And when I mean spice, I don't mean hot, but I feel uh, the flavoring of that. Where's my beverage? Oh, it's over there. I'm not drinking. I got my own. What? Oh, that okay. one. So you continue here. I'll give you your beverage. Okay. Okay. Important. And it's okay if a little bit's left over, you can eat it even by itself. It's really so delicious that you can put it on a toast. And trust me, you're going to be happy with the way it tastes just like that because the bacon is cooked. The guava, actually guava paste, uh, you can eat right out of the package. And it comes in cans. It comes in plastic containers. We usually buy the cans just because it's more sustainable. The price doesn't fluctuate that much. And uh, guava, fun fact, in Puerto Rico... It's one of those things that you can take out in a pinch. Uh, I remember at home, my mom, you know, when people would come in yes, uninvited, a pinch. Oh. Uh, and she would just take some guava paste without cooking because it's already ready to eat, some fresh cheese, and just that guava and cheese. Similarly to how in Puerto Rico we do the dulce de papaya, the papaya, candied papaya with cheese, and guava works really, really well. Alrighty, so here, you can see, Paulina, if you can 
come in closer. The idea is to evenly distribute it. Normally, for example, my mom's recipe, she does about 14 grams of, uh, of guava. I like to do a little bit more because I like the ratio of the cake to the guava to be a little bit higher. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. yeah. Paulina's going to now put the layer. Yeah, and someone was asking what was on the bottom part of the of the cake, I mean of the guava, and it is this, this delicious dough that we that we made. And look at it, it's very sticky. You need to use your, I mean, you could put it in the fridge for, for a little bit, but for these kind of purpose. And remember, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure that you're covering the top of the guava. So you have the dough on the bottom, the guava bacon dash of cinnamon mixture in the middle, and then on top you're going to put the rest of the dough. So we divided the dough in half, and it's very, very sticky. Um, Somebody, <laughs> like, and it's very sticky. It is very sticky. Somebody uh, said, pinch es un chin chin. Yep, that's pretty accurate. Es un chin chin. That's how we say it in Puerto Rico. Un chin chin. Cuanto? Un chin chin. Which means, you know, a little, a little. Check it. Okay. This is so fun. I mean, it's really fun playing. Somebody said yeah. you can use the guava mixture like a spread on toast or something. Yeah, uh, you Ooh, can store it in the yes. fridge. Yeah. Imagine like a sourdough, freshly baked sourdough bread. And I know like, everyone's baking. I've been trying to buy bread flour and rye flour, and everything is literally sold out. I think I have flour coming in the middle of May. So people have been baking. But yeah, like a toast um, with this uh, bacon guava jam maybe a little bit of cheese. I would put a little bit of cheese on there. I think that could be a really delicious breakfast toast. I'm gonna move right. a little bit and wash my hand because I was cutting the bacon and I have yeah. the soap. All right, so, and we are almost done. This is the final step. Be and after, by the way, our oven has been on at 350 degrees. Yeah. Since it's such a quick dessert to make, uh, I recommend that you preheat your oven before you even start mixing your, your wet and dry ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the butter, the eggs, um, because that way when you're done making everything, it just goes straight into the oven, no worries, uh, and wasting time. And Believe me, once you start smelling that guava with the butter, you're not going to want to wait. You're going to want to eat that right away. Luckily, like in TV, we've prepared, you know, yeah. we're not going to have you wait yeah. until this is done in it's the like oven. The food network. Just you, just you wait. All right. I, I, I'm not like the food network. Not at all. <laughs> I thought it was funny. So it looks right. a little messy, but okay, it's not. It definitely looks messy. I feel like maybe we could have done a little bit more of batter, but not really. Just we like it. We like it thin. We don't like it to be very cakey. I mean, there's different ways of doing it. Um, we found that we prefer it to be a little thinner. Uh, so that's why we're not, we don't have a lot of, you know, we're doing two cups of flour in this recipe. So yeah, for those of you asking, yes, 350 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, so Paulina is now going to take those little spots that are left where the guava is popping up and cover that little by little. There's still some batter left. And in the meantime, I'm going to start taking out the one that we prepared earlier this morning, which, let me see if it's hot. Yeah, it's very hot. Let me grab some gloves. Put it over Actually, here. You know what? This was and the right amount. We've got this one, which I did not bake in this little oven. We baked it in the regular oven, but I was keeping it warm here. And that's basically what the final product looks like. And sorry for the camera angle. I'm definitely not a cameraman. So this is the final product looks like. As you can see, let me see if I can find there in the middle is that guava layer. And we're going to cut it and show you what it looks like in the middle. So yes, it's a guava bacon cake, but the cake part is very... The panetelas don't have a huge layer of cake, but they're actually pretty thin. So let me get a plate out and show you what that looks on the inside. Paulina's there finishing Yeah, up. I'm just finishing. What I'm doing is I'm taking that spoon, um, and now I'm stop using my hands. I'm taking the spoon, just making sure that my dough is spread out and that it is covering the guava layer. You cut your shoes. Those are pretty crazy shoes. Ese molde. Did yeah, you I, really show my shoes? <laughs> yes, I did. My slippers. Uh, so this one, yeah, this is a square mold. This okay. one is uh, eight by eight. And we did this one just because we don't want to be eating 45 um, pounds of panetella. In the oven. Panetella. Um, in the oven. Well, that one just went in. Went in. 
for half an hour. Paul, if you can just rinse your hands real quick so you can cut this. And I'm going to start just getting the corner. So the cake, somebody's asking what the cake portion is made of. So it's pretty simple. The cake, for the batter, you have a bar of butter, a cup of sugar, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla. And we'll be posting this later, but just to give you a little heads up. Two tablespoons, two teaspoons, sorry, of baking powder, two cups of flour, pinch, ching ching de sal, or like a teaspoon, two tablespoons of coconut, coconut oil, and then we added some rum because this is a boozy brunch, so why not rum? Um, and that's it. That's the batter. And then the guava is just about 16, 17 ounces of the guava paste. The We're adding rum. I'm sorry, not rum. Uh, see, I'm having so much rum that I'm adding rum now to everything. Oh, yeah, that, that has a little bit of, of cinnamon. cinnamon. And then the bacon, of course. And then the bacon. So this is the ready version. We did a smaller um, half, a half a portion here. So you would just divide the recipe in half. So it kind of depends on, yes, you can freeze panatela. Yes, it freezes well. And then you can also add powdered sugar um, on top if you if you want, which we are going to do. Mm. I just had a piece, it was delicious. Woo! And yes, Liz, everything is better with rum. We definitely agree. So I just cut it all up because it's very likely that we'll be eating all of it today. And the first piece to take out is always the most difficult. But that should came out pretty well. Oh, I have a piece missing here, which I'm going to take and slide underneath. And yes, you can definitely put ice cream on top. We thought of that, but then we were like, okay, that's a lot of sugar. But for sure, ice cream on top would go let's great. Bring, let's bring it here. Just because. Uh, what rum did we add? We added in aged rum. We added two tablespoons of aged rum. And All right. here we have the final product. And I'm not gonna lie, I really wanna eat this now. This recipe, like I said, had a little bit less bacon, and when we tasted it, it was great, but we said, why not do a little bit more? Because the guava is so intense that we wanted to get more of that bacon flavor throughout. So this is the Final product. Oh, it looks awesome. Guava bacon panetela. Super easy to make. Didn't even take us, you know, I think 35 minutes. Obviously, we had done some prep with having all of our ingredients pre batch, the, doing the, the okay. Nissan Plus. I think we need to try it. But this is it. So let's see. Let's see how this thing is. Okay. It's still pretty warm. But... Okay. Let's do this. Oh, it's, it's, it's mm. really hot. Woo! Mm. Okay. Mm. That's pretty damn good. Yes. <laughs> mm. The bacon really for us makes a lot, mm, makes a really good difference and gives it a really nice savory and a little bit of a crunchy, you know, twist to it. Uh, mm. All right. And the first thing that we did for those of you that tuned in later was Gustavo's rum Boozy coconut. frozen coconut lemonade. And it's really damn good. So guys, thank you for tuning in. We will put the recipe on our page. Uh, Discover Puerto Rico will probably share it on their stories as well. Thank you to Discover Puerto Rico. Thank remember, you for the opportunity. Remember, once this is all done, you can't be here now, but we wanted to bring a little bit of Puerto Rico to you, to your homes. So please come visit. We'll be waiting. We'll be ready for you with more coconut, more rum, more guava, panetela, whatever you need. So and beach and somebody asked adventure. How, it's going to be 30 minutes in the oven. Thank you for asking. 30 minutes. Yes. A lot of other recipes will um, say about 35 minutes. No, we, we you don't want it to be dry. Like I said at the beginning, gooey, creamy, um, and nobody wants a dry cake. Buen provecho. Everyone have a lovely rest of your day. We can't wait to see you in Puerto Rico. Yes, we're going to be posting it on the Spoon Experience. Thank so you follow for the Spoon in. Experience. Thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely Sunday. Bye, so everyone. Ciao. ciao.